Hey guys, welcome back to another Q&A video. I missed last week because I was way too busy with house repairs and cleaning up around the yard. So when that happens, I'll just put up a repair video or some other kind of video like that. We're heading into the fall here in Canada, but we've had just beautiful weather. I'm filming this a little bit earlier in the week. We've had weather over 20 degrees Celsius here. It's just been amazing. While we're heading into fall here in Canada, our YouTubers in Australia are heading into their springtime and summertime. So while we're fixing up snowblowers here in Canada, they'll be fixing up their lawnmowers. And also before I get started, I want to thank all my new subscribers. I want to thank all those who regularly comment and those who faithfully watch my videos each time I post a new one. Now I'm going to get right into the questions. The first question is in regards to swapping an engine from one lawnmower to the next. But the YouTuber asked me, can I take an engine from a lawnmower that is not self-propelled and put it into one that is self-propelled or vice versa? He's wondering, what are the issues that you may run into when you do this? Well, I've got an older mower here flipped over just to show you guys the shaft. The issues that you will commonly run into is that the shaft will be of a different length from engine to engine. And also the blade adapter will be a different length as well. Anytime you swap an engine, whether it's from a lawnmower that was self-propelled or not, or even from a pressure washer, that's a common issue that I personally run into myself. What you want to do is take note of how deep the mower deck is, because if you put in an engine and the shaft is too short, it just will not cut the grass properly. For example, the shaft on this engine here is pretty long, and with the adapter it allows the blade to cut right at the bottom of the deck. Sometimes you can add a longer blade adapter and that will correct the problem, but I've often seen people put in an engine, the shaft is way too short, and they're wondering why their lawnmower is not cutting grass. Now if you take an engine from a pressure washer, most of the time the shaft is really short on those engines, and it really won't work on the lawnmower. Now the whole pattern on the engine to mount the mower onto the deck is usually the same from one engine to the next. It's just the major thing is the shaft. So don't buy an engine without first measuring the shaft and making sure that it's going to work for your particular lawnmower deck. Sometimes people ask me, can I remove a valve seal without damaging it? Actually, if you plan on removing it, it's because it's not good anymore, so it doesn't really matter if you damage it or not. As you can see, I removed one here and it's damaged. You basically have to sacrifice it to remove it. And in reality, it's not going to be used again, so it does not really matter. You just do not want to damage this part of the head over here where the valve seal goes on. And when it comes to putting on a new valve seal, people often ask me, how do I get it in there without damaging it as well? Well, what I do is I grab a socket that fits nice and perfect around the metal part of the valve seal, as you can see. Basically, just like this, and then I'll hammer it down gently to get it down to where it should be. Another question I often get in regards to valve seals is what are the symptoms of a worn out valve seal? Well the most prominent symptom will be that your engine is burning a lot of oil. I'd say that that's the most common symptom you're going to come across. If your engine burns a lot of oil what's going to happen is it's going to get all carboned up especially on the surface of the piston. That carbon can come off the piston and then ruin the cylinder walls. If you suspect your valve seals are leaking and causing your engine to burn a lot of oil then you should replace them immediately. A question I often get when reinstalling overhead valves is which position do these little retainer clips go in? Well this is the position that they go in. They should be facing upwards like this. As you can see they're thinner in the bottom and thicker at the top so always remember that the thinner part goes downwards. And it would go in just like this. And once it's installed you want the retainer clips to be like this. A lot of people email me and ask me, how do I get the correct chain for my chainsaw? Well, my best advice to you guys is just bring in your old chain to your local small engine dealer that sells chains and they can match it up for you. A lot of people aren't familiar with the pitch, gauge, and how many drive links their chain has. So when people ask me that question, I just tell them, take the chain off your chainsaw, take it to your dealer and get a chain that way. They're going to match it up for you. They know what they're doing and they will specifically make sure that it's an identical chain. And you don't have to be embarrassed about doing this. Any good small engine shop with good customer service will help you out as much as they can when it comes to matching up the right parts for you. Now another question I got from a YouTuber the other day is, if I mix up the linkages to the carburetor, is it possible that it would over rev out of control? Well my answer to that is definitely yes. It has the potential to make it over rev 
or not rev high enough. I've personally done it myself in the past. It happens to everybody that works on small engines from time to time. Again, if it starts to over rev, turn it off right away because you could blow the connecting rod on your engine and cause severe damage. What I recommend you do is take pictures either with your phone or your digital camera and then when you reassemble your carburetor and the linkages, you're sure you're putting them back correctly. I do have a video that shows a proper linkage configuration to this specific engine here. What I'm going to do is put the link to the video underneath today's video so you can go watch it. A YouTuber asked me the other day, is it bad if you get carburetor cleaner all over your hands when you're working on carburetors? The simple answer to that is yes it's bad for you because the body does absorb chemicals through the skin. I know it's hard to believe but it does do that. And when you look at a can of carburetor cleaner you're going to see the poison symbol on it. And technically when you work on a carburetor if you're going to get any type of chemicals on your hands you should be wearing gloves. Never underestimate the ability of your body to absorb chemicals through the skin. Some people take painkillers through a patch system, which the body slowly absorbs the painkillers. You can look at it that way because the skin is porous and these chemicals do find their way into your body. If you're going to use chemicals every day for many years, take safety precautions every time. If you just do it once in a while as a homeowner, it's not too bad, but when you're exposed to it every day, that's when the real damage can be caused to your body because it's continually absorbing that poison every day. The other day a YouTuber asked me why is there oil coming out of the muffler on my chainsaw and also a YouTuber asked me the other day as well why is there oil coming out of the muffler of my grass trimmer. They were referring to two cycle engines not four strokes so they have to put mixed gas in their equipment. Well the most likely cause of that problem is that you have too much oil in your gas. Mix it according to the manufacturer specifications, which will usually be 50 to 1. Also make sure to use the exact oil that they recommend. Never buy cheap oil, always buy a brand name oil. It's going to burn better, it's going to lubricate better. You also might want to replace the air filter and the spark plug. If the air filter is plugged, it's going to burn a lot more gas. And also if your plug isn't firing properly, it may also not burn the gas that's coming through the engine and thus spewing it out of the muffler. But usually when I see this in my shop, it's because people put way too much oil in their gas. This will be it for today's Q&A video. Thanks for watching guys. Have yourselves a great weekend and you can see me here in my next video.